Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. I'd like to welcome y'all back to the 90 Proof Lounge. Christmas conversations of the 90s, the golden era, 100% hip hop and G-Funk, St. Nicholas Cleave, and Spliff Kringle. How you doing, bro? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, man. We're, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. We're drinking some Captain Moe's and eggnog. Usually we're on the, our A game, but right now we're just relaxing, enjoying the holidays, and we're about to get into two albums that I completely love. We got High for Xmas by No Limit, Master P, The West Coast Bad Boys, and we got Christmas on Death Row, 1996 and 1994 that we're about to get into, and uh, we'll dive into whichever you pick first. Bliff, what do you think? Uh, well, let's tackle No Limit. Let's do it. <clears throat> Normally, I mean, obviously you're aware, not a No Limit fan, which is funny because Suave House is like, love that shit, yeah. rap a lot, love that shit. Yep. No Limit doesn't really do it for me. I don't like the factory that they are. It's mm -hmm. less about the music, more about the industrial aspects of it for them. You know, right. make that money. Um, this was obviously pre what they did when they moved south. You know, I mean, there's the rep in Richmond. Yeah. They're the West Coast boys. From the West is, Coast, from the South. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it was it, it was good because that was, you can see that that was their, uh, they were starting to have that approach with their music. And when I listen to this, there's so many guys that were coming out of Richmond and uh, other areas in the Bay Area that Master P put on there. He's showing a lot of love. King George, Pizzo. Pizzo, that was one of those underground artists that you always continuously saw when it came to Bay Area music. He was on there. Lil Rick. Lil Rick that kind of stuck with him. And then I was listening to it more and when you get to Big Ed. Like Big Ed is one of those dudes that he stuck with from then and took him south. And even guys like that, like I was listening to it on this album, like he's even then before they kind of took off and went back and took over the south or whatever, Big Ed sort of had that southern flow a little bit too coming from the west coast and was he and P friends like from way back or I did think he that sign they, him as an artist and through the music is how they met? Like, yeah, I mean, I never, I, I never, uh, I know that they must have been friends before. I haven't looked into it too much, but I know that they must have been friends before uh, they went back. He went back down south and really stayed in New Orleans or Baton Rouge where he, they were putting out no limit music because he was from uh, Richmond, right? So he must have been met him in the Richmond Times. And, and yeah, just all of those guys that were on uh, that album, it was cool to see. It was cool to see Mafiosos, who's an underground Richmond group that I uh, I loved their album uh, that I got from the 90s. And they, I mean, it was cool. They kept it pretty Christmas too. See Murders on there. And that was even before um, a lot of the stuff that he came out with. You know what I mean? So it was early. And I like Silk's verse on it as well. Yeah, I thought that was, um, it being early was what it allowed it to be not listenable because I'm always going to be proven wrong. There's going to be no limit stuff. I'm going to like, especially from their height, you know, right. Can enable. I like that shit. You know, surprised they weren't on that. That was just before. Right. And I mean, no limits, another conversation for another day, focusing more on this. And the fact it came out at this time frame is kind of dope because you get master P on several tracks. No, uh, no brand name, no I trademark for what he is. Right. He's a rapper here and he's putting out some, some cool ideas that he's having. He thinks he can capitalize on Christmas and he gets some pretty solid Christmas songs out of this. As far as the music, you know, how you would listen to it and what, what really kind of gets you going. Any of these songs phonetically dope to you rather than just being, you know, a fucking Christmas song? Um, it depends on what you're looking at it for. I mean, for me, yeah, it's a fun. And, and as me and uh, Heat were even cruising over here, listening to it is... Yeah, there's some dopeies. The King George song I thought was kind of dope. I mean, King George really isn't your like top of the line artist. And I think that's always kind of been known. But when we were listening to that song on the way over here, I was like, that's a lock up for Christmas. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Or okay. yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I heard that, I think he does another one on there that I he does. Look. Yeah. So with, I think, with a bunch of other rappers. Think, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. So, so, like so, so it's just a locked up one, which is the whole theme about it is dope to me. And I think, like I said, he's not a really top of the line artist, but what I love about master P even at that time is he was, if you could rap, 
he was going to try and put the top of the line, other pieces of the puzzle to go so you could shine. And and I think even, you know what I mean? Not a top of the line artist like King George. That was a dope track. I was like, this is dope, dude. Like the theme about it though, beats off the hook. 100% agree. Yeah. Actually like the track. Yeah. And I really don't like Christmas music yeah. in general. I just, I just don't like it. I mean, there's a hundred... Th- shitty things I could say about it because I really dislike it that much um you know I, I don't I like it less than I like country music and that's you know horrendous to me. <laughs> but at the end of the day having to look at this stuff and yeah I mean you're gonna play Christmas music you're gonna hear Christmas music I mean I work in retail that's my kind of nine to five situation and we have that shit playing all the time mm-hmm. it, it's painful to me to hear the same songs over and over again this our you know ancient kind of garbage that it you know is only listened to during this season because it's only good enough for this season yeah you know mm-hmm. but the, both these albums i think have some songs where i was like jesus christ you can have these fun guys with killed it, this shit yeah and that was it yeah. that was it i mean we'll talk about death row but I don't know if there's any swearing on that whole album. <laughs> yeah, not even on the on the Santa Claus is coming straight to the. You know, there's like, it's a lot of radio much. edit stuff, right? But when you, even when you go over to the Christmas on Death Row, like you got a lot of guys that, um, you know, what you mean you have a lot of guys that really didn't get too much shine on Death Row. Like when you look at like OFTB, like they were signed to um, Death Row f- since I think like ninety. Five, I want to say 90, late 94, 95 okay. and they never really had a chance but when I heard that song I'm like D- this shit is off the hook you know what I mean like yeah. I and and for them to get a chance and like I said Danny boy a lot of these guys that were that were kind of underneath death row that were like six feet deep is is an R&B group that I think put out one video on death row that really got some shine and whatever and when you hear Christmas on death row it was a lot of guys that were like yeah an open door I'm gonna go through and try and kill this and I, I heard that a little bit in in the album right but not to get ahead of ourselves let's just make sure we clean up what we had here I mean there's only what seven songs on the no limit album yeah, compared to what was going on on the on the death row. Right, right. right. And this is more of a sort of get together and make sort of some party joints and throw them together. A couple of them are Christmassy. There's a couple of them that have absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. I mean, that mafioso song, Chilling in the Game. Dope track, actually. I'm not a huge fan of those guys, but it, it's actually a pretty decent track. And... I, I, I don't find where it made its way into yeah, the Christmas I'm not sure album. about I think that they, one. But that's Master P, though. I got to respect it just for this. You got to love Master P for what we were talking about, how he can just put any artist on. And I just felt like that was one of those times, especially back in the 90s, where he just crossed paths and was like, yeah, we're putting out this Christmas album. You got a yeah. track? And they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah, we got a track. Yeah. Chilling in the game. Is it about Christmas? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, throw it on, dog. You know what that's, I mean? Uh, it's, it, that, and, 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 and that's what it was. And it's like, fuck, man, to get like... And, and the thing is, is uh, I, as I said, with, when it comes to the the Death Row one and, and the Master P one, there's a lot of... It's like when we we had Q on here and we spoke to him about the, the soul that goes into music. There was... The, even if you dislike this album, you know, there was effort put in there. There's good singers. There's good rappers on both. And it's just like there's... You know, you kind of nitpick it to find what works for you, but... Yeah, it... It's not a great album, especially actually. I think compared for, to the for death, Christmas or death Row? yeah, no, high for Christmas. Okay. The, it's not. I don't think it's on the same level as as Death Row. Death Row's a legit Christmas album. Oh yeah, you know, uh, well, you know, there's there's stuff we could say about each song in it, but this wasn't as much a Christmas album. It just had Christmas songs on it, and yeah. they kind of sold it as a christmas album right yeah. it was it was it was a, a christmas project but some of these songs are actually dope like if i made a mix in in uh, for you know a, a, a christmas day or whatever right yeah there's at least a couple songs i would take off this and put on that mix oh yeah and it's crazy and i think uh peaceful christmas peaceful christmas was uh on the death row one they kept they actually kept it like pretty death row like when even when you hear the softer songs like Peaceful Christmas, that shit's funky, man. And that shit's by just Danny Boy, like mm-hmm. doing his thing or whatever. You don't get that same like what you just said when you're in London Drugs. They ain't playing that. If you if if you were playing Peaceful Christmas, if you were walking through the aisle and I didn't know where Peaceful Christmas came on, I can guarantee fucking to you, you'd have been like, it's a little bit more funk on that one than yeah. usual. You know what I mean? And, and 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 he did his thing. He was a good singer. He he had a good flow to it and um. 
like I said, it was a, there was a lot of artists under Death Row at that time that really hadn't put anything out. Michelle A for one. I mean, she was with Suge, was with Dre, but she never really had too much come out at all besides features and stuff like that. And then she dropped one on this, right? So it was, if you were curious, if you're a person that's curious to know who else is on Death Row and what they're doing and what they could bring to the table, projects like this kind of open the curtains for you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't think that the R&B on the album, like the the songs that were fully sung without in any of the other artists any of the rap artists or anything like that on it I, i'm not i wasn't impressed as much there's a few tracks that were okay but it was it was mostly the rap game on this shit that really kind of sold it for me um what do you think of oftb uh actually i thought that was probably the uh, christmas in the ghetto I think that was probably the best song on the album. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Right, right, right when I heard it, I knew that that was coming. I was like, this is such a, a, a spliff track. And it was crazy because it's like I said, you probably would have heard of a lot of what those guys were doing back in the day if they had the opportunity to make an album, right? Right. But um, what was your, if you had to pick, what was your favorite verse on Christmas on Death Row? Because there's some hot verses on there. You got Daz, you got Badass, you got Snoop, <clears throat> Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg on a couple different joints, which he's a singing as well, but I put him under the rapping category of rapping, singing kind of. Um, okay, fair. But if you were to pick, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of heat. OFTB, they did their thing. Um, I wish by the dog pound, second verse by Corrupt. I mean, Corrupt. He he he's got that. He's got the the title, man. He just being from Philly, taking the the West Coast swag full combo like it's yeah. just you can't really touch him man as sick as that verse is and it's dope because he he it's the whole album is is christmasy but he keeps it christmas as well but it's relatable it it's kind of an all season verse and track mm -hmm. but he only barely outshines tradey yeah, that's actually my favorite verse. So you asked Gans if you were going to ask me that, that's what I would have yeah, said right, right, was, right. was, was Trady just for the... I love when people get creative. I actually watched an interview on Trey D, um, which is, I'll, I'll keep it brief because it's not really about what we're saying, but it, it, he, he, a lot of, he was like, a lot of artists were trying to do certain things. And he's like, I was really just focused on making my rhymes different and creative and just adding more creativeness to mine and like, you know, similes, multis, whatever he wanted to do. And when I hear that, he's the only dude that's like, really spitting real to the Christmas thing too because everyone's like Santa Claus is coming to town and six four yeah, yeah. sleighs and shit like that and he's yeah. like yeah I saw Santa creeping through the house dropping off presents but really it's mom dukes yeah, yeah. and you're just like dude that's real and at the end of the he's like yo I just you know went along with the role and just kind of you know went yeah. back to sleep and shit <laughs> you know what I mean I'm like that's and Trey D's one of the biggest real actual gangsters out there so it's like that was cool to see that that, that he did that plus he's a lyrical motherfucker yeah would have been might have been nice to kept Daz just on the first track and have Trey D and Corrupt do that I wish song. Oh, dude. And I gotta look at yeah, that would have been beastly. There's some those two are serious lyricists. One I always kind of consider uh Corrupt to have more of an East Coast influence just because he is originally from Philly, which mm -hmm. I think he originally became an MC there. And the West Coast life, especially moving there and having not much of an option, is so attractive that he was like, "Okay, khakis are blue." Yeah, streets, and there's a, there's a lot of this, them. but and but he adds, he's like, "I'm Philly's gonna be just Philly cheese steaks through that, my whole yeah. my whole game, right?" And like, that happens with so many MCs that move to the West. Yeah, they love kind of where they are. Yeah, yeah. Like iced tea. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, yeah, I used to. There's, there's, and, but there's tons of them. And you could tell because, as you said, that's the the trademark, the branding they get from their hometown or wherever they spent that the most influential years before they get to the West Coast. You see it throughout everything they do. Yeah. It never leaves corrupt, right? Yeah. And he, and, and he killed that, man. And uh, another person I wanted to bring up on the death row thing was Jay Flex. Did you check the Jay Flex join on there? Mm-hmm. What I like about him is that was actually, dope. I think it was Party for the Homies. Party for the Homies is, is, and he's an unbelievable writer. I don't know if you knew this, but Jay Flex actually wrote Natural Born Killers for Dre and nice. the, the the California Love Verse for Dre. So he, this dude's really? a monster. 
Really? Like, yeah, man. And, and, and yeah, so Jay Flex is the, a huge writer for, he was actually Dre's ghost writer for a s- serious period of time. Where he's, like, he's at a number. He's at a number. I've never, I, I actually didn't even know who this guy was until I saw this album. Yeah. And I, and when you listen to party for the homies or whatever, I was listening to it knowing that before I heard that track or whatever, I don't think you would have noticed it off the bat. But when you do know that stuff I was listening to, I was like, I guarantee that Jay Flex wrote 99.9% of that song. And it, it was cool to see him involved and have his name put out there. Um, that, that song was corny as fuck though. It was super I dug corny. it, man. I can fucking catch hey, me at a Christmas not, party, it's, man. It's a Christmas album, right? So I, yeah. it's... Right, right. I think a lot but of it corny was, is, it was fun, is a part yeah. of everything. Yeah, yeah like, it's, it's acceptable right. on yeah. an album. Yeah. 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 There's other albums out there where there, it's kind of... Uh, there's a theme to it. There's a, there's a purpose to what they're doing. And I don't just mean like the shit that has to do with your particular style or, or brand or your group or, or you as a solo artist. Um we covered uh, Gravediggers, Prince Paul. He has an album a little bit later on after the Gravediggers stuff that he does called Prince Amongst Thieves. And he basically right. does this movie yeah. on an album. And you got to give some space. You got to give a little bit of leeway to how some of these songs come across because it's part of something bigger. Yeah. And with this, it's part of, uh, you know, a holiday that has to do with family and kids and shit like that, right? Like, you can't have all these Sean Price, you know, how Sean Price stole Christmas songs and yeah, shit. Yeah, like, the, the Grinch approach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Grinch approach to it. But that yeah. was that was heat, though. Sean Price, the whole him and, and the stuff he did with Health the Skelter, I mean, anything I hear from Sean yeah. Price is dope. That was that was 2017, but holy fuck, that's the best Christmas Still song I've ever heard. I mean, I wish I was on. I told him when you heard I, when you showed it to me, I'm like, man, there needs to be a Grinch album yeah. that Sean Price did. <laughs> totally. Totally. And, um, I'm sure Rockness will get himself in there and do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Del- R.I.P. Though, Sean. Sean. Price. Yeah. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. Um, but to go into the high for Xmas or whatever, I like when they uh, what Master P would 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 jack him for beats for the holidays. Just I love his theme, like his the, the way he adds a theme into everything that he does. All right. And, and, and he goes through and he and he, and he rips it and just even. Um, uh, what was it? The hood, the hood carols. I think he does it with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's I know like, what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, man, hood carols. I gotta yeah. remember he does the, he the five days TV, of Christmas or whatever. TV and a bit from up the street. Yeah, <laughs> does the first five days of the twelve days of Christmas and, and a bit from up the street. Like, and when I heard that, I'm like, dude, he. There's so much like, let's make something. Like when I look at, even if it starts to kind of push for some people to the corny side, he keeps it gangster, which kind of like pushes that away a little bit more. And then he, he, it's like you're reading a, a listening a rap goosebump book. You know what I mean? This yeah. dude's Eddie, Eddie's like reinventing everything that they did in a ghetto way. And I, yeah. he's always done that. And I, I love Master P for that shit. That that hood Carol shit. That it reminded me of. Uh, have you heard the song? Um, I think it's Quad City DJs. The mm. uh, sixty nine boys. And oh, okay, sixty nine boys. That's like it's um sixty nine boys. That's, fuck, that's, what's the, I, I forget what the song's called. It's like uh, I might have even fucking written it down. It's so, a, it's a solid song, solid song. Oh, what you want for Christmas? And both the artists on there do uh, the twelve days of Christmas, but they go from twelve down to one, and they do it as like the end part of their verse. Oh, it's fucking money. Oh dude. man, it's money. Yeah, if That's you haven't crazy. heard it, I'll, I'll send it to you after. Yeah, send it's it to tight. me. I gotta hear that, man, because yeah. we're doing they, as as everyone out there. We're doing a Christmas episode every year, man. This is just one of many, but that that's crazy. Sixty nine boys too. I didn't expect to hear the, the their name brought up. It, yeah, it came out in in ninety five. Um, some other ones to check too. Obviously, Players Ball by Outcast Christmas. Oh yeah, album. yeah. I've and to know that that, that that was the hit, you know, came out almost what six months, seven months previous to their album. Yeah, was. What got Outcast, Outcast started is a, is a Christmas song. Like, yeah, that's insane. Wild. Yeah, it's just I think when it comes to it that the, there wasn't a lot of Christmas albums that come out, and these guys kind of like you know, and especially No Limit Death Row, No Limit mm-hmm. Death Row. The two when you say '90s, besides you know Bad Boy kind of attached to it, it was, and there's the like Def Jams, but really that a lot of people know is is No Limit and Death Row were the ones that came from the street and really were pumping and. Of course, they're the two ones with the with the right the the, the Christmas albums in. 
I uh, I, w- I was listening to it, and, and the more that I listened to the High for Xmas, the more I, I started to pick up things that I liked or whatever, like Dangerous Dame. I don't know if you know much about Dangerous Dame, but he's a dude that came out of Oakland, was super uh, attached to, you know, Too Short, Ant Banks, Yak Mouth, put out tons of albums, was kind of like oh, an Oakland yes, legend. yes. Dangerous Dame. He's That's on funny. There. I kept looking at his name and I was like, yeah, I, I don't know this guy. And he's got I do some know. fire on there and he, yeah. came, he, he came tight with it. And, and it was crazy that, uh, um, that P was really doing that in Richmond with the guys from Richmond, like Lil Rick. Like if you listen to, I think it's, uh, same song. Uh, deep in the game. Deep in the game was his album that he did that had like the life I lead and shit like that. When you really, he's right. busting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah like Lil, Lil Rick is, he, he was messing with a lot of guys out there. And I like that this is kind of one of the early compilations that he was kind of just getting everybody together. Yeah, I, I didn't get a lot out of the guys on that song. That's, you know, Big Ed, Lil Rick, yeah. Dangerous Dame. I didn't, the verses didn't really pull me in. Yeah. It felt like King George, as soon as his shit hit, he was kind of the star of the show. Yeah. He did it in both songs. I think even with P on it. Yeah. And, I mean, P's actually pretty tight when he's not trying to be that machine, right? Yeah. Like, there's a reason why people loved his shit before he, you know, yeah. really got big because he's a f- good artist. Yeah. He's just driven. You know, he's, he's, it's a little bit like Puff, like, get in, get your verse done, let's go next. But he's actually rapping. Yeah. You know what I mean? He well, might, he's, he might, he's part he, of he, it, he'll, right? He'll, he'll there's a get... hundred guys signed to no, no Limit at the time. Yeah. Or, yeah. or once they, once they get to that point. Okay. Let's let's have a look at a couple of songs here though on, on the the death row one. Now we've all listened to tons of Christmas music. You right. hear it; it's kind of everywhere. Yeah. Um, Silver bells. You know Michelle the song. A. Yeah. Yeah. Not just that song, but you know the song, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of her rendition of it? Wow, man! I swear to God, we really are brothers, huh? Like I, that was the first one. I, this is no. I hate doing. Even, like saying things on bad on people's names or whatever, but I think Michelle did. She didn't come correct on this one. I thought it was a very uh, poor edition or a poor rendition. Uh, rendition of yeah. of um, doing it. When you hear Silver Bells, it's especially Silver Bells. Actually, if you're gonna ask really my opinion, when you do a song like Silver Bells. It's done by famous people, but all of those famous people try to do it better than the last famous person. Meaning you get Madonna who does uh, Santa Baby or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then someone else, or I think it was, uh, oh, this is bad. Uh, it was in someone else, um, Etta, Etta James, I think it was. Okay. Etta James did or did the song, bef- did it before her. Right. And it's it, it like everyone else is trying to do it better but they're both amazing you're like who do you or, compare? or different or do different. do a, or a completely, completely different. you know unique stylistic version of of what that song is right th- to try and try and make it yourself yeah i think it was a or fail make it of, your own a fail for michelle i i i wasn't overly impressed either um silent night with bgoti and uh six feet deep and guess Yeah, what I mean, you know what? I wasn't actually, in, I was not in, crazy impressed with it, but I didn't actually hate that song. Fair. I didn't I, actually. Hate I that don't song. like the song. Period. Yeah. I think Silent Night is like the worst Christmas song that there is. So <laughs> when I heard it, it was kind of slow and it didn't really I'd like to Scrooge. I just, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a good album. I yeah. mean, if if I rate this out of ten, it's a Christmas album. I can't. I can't. Christmas is the the music is just kind of yeah, temporary. Yeah. It feels right. right like right. the most I'm ever gonna give it is like a five. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah, give yeah. this a five. <laughs> yeah, there like you go. It's, if there there's a go. Christmas album you're ever gonna play, the Death Row one's the one you want to play. But I don't. I don't like Silent Night as a song. I I wouldn't have put this song even on the album. I mean, all these guys all have their own songs on here. Anyways, this yeah. it didn't. What do you think? What do you think of Danny Boy on uh, Christmas Death Row? Whether it was a song, I mean, I think he, like I said, when I heard Peace Before Christmas, I thought that was off the hook. I was like, yo, that is actually a dope track. And I always fucked with Danny I, Boy I like would that. put that on my playlist. Like, when I made a full list of 
four songs plus a handful of songs from these albums, these two albums. Yeah, I actually Pete, like Six Feet Deep, Frosty the on, Snowman too. Really? Yep. I hated that song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's I just, with, it's, yeah. Yeah, I liked that, it. I that with. one in Silent Night, I was just like, of all the songs that you could pick and all the, the ways you could make it your own. Yeah. Frosty the Snowman is just so childish. Like, yeah. I just didn't care to hear it. Mm-hmm. I, I listen to it every time I, I listen to it, you know, but I would skip it. I would skip. Yeah. Fuck. I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, it just, I, it I, didn't, I it we... didn't, uh, it didn't seem like uh, of all the songs you could pick, that didn't seem like the right choice of song. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you'll see like these, the voice and shit like that where people will, you know, be competing and sometimes you just pick the wrong shit. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just pick the wrong song. I think that was kind of the case here. I don't. Yeah. Silent Night, not necessarily, because there's people out there that actually love that song. I would have chose maybe those guys killed it. But that shows the difference in opinion too, because like Frosty the Snowman, I didn't mind. Like when I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, this is dope. Plus, I'm a, I'm a Frosty. F- I'm, I'm you're like the Scrooge. I'm like I like Christmas. I fuck with Christmas. I, I got like two Christmas. Uh, it's not that well, I don't like Christmas. No, I, get it. I just I don't get fucking it. like Christmas music. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But <laughs> motherfucker, people out there liking Christmas music, and I'm 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 liking it. But um. <laughs> If you were to give these, and we got to do it out of 10, bro, you got to figure, I don't even know if you looked at it like that, but we're going to do it out of 10, and we'd love to hear what all the viewers and subscribers think about these two albums. I fuck with Christmas. Scrooge fucks with Christmas. We're <laughs> we're in the 90 Proof Lounge doing our thing. What do you guys think of this album? I thought of the two albums. I thought for what Master P brought to the table with High for Christmas, doing uh, kind of early stages of bringing everybody around him together on a track, the themes to it, the character, you know, the characteristics that he brought to it were dope. Um, I'm going to give it for a Christmas album. I'm going to give it a five and a half. Master P, no limit. Uh, West coast, bad boys. There's what? Seven songs on the album. Eight songs. Yep. So it's, it, it's just pushing away from an EP. I'll give it. it might even, I'll give it. Never a, mind. It is an EP. Three and a half. Three and a half. All right. I got I five just, and a half. I, I mean, I, that's not even much because you there were some things that you picked out of the album, yeah. which is dope. And we're always everybody knows out there who's watching anybody who you know when we speak, everybody knows that there's such an opinion that can be had. I mean, we like to have fun here, we like to have drinks, and we're, we 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 have fun with everything. But there's always a strong opinion, especially when it comes to hip hop. Growing up with you, you're an East Coast guy. You held East Coast to your heart, and you love MC and you love lyricism. Mm-hmm. Anybody in the rap game, Master P included would know that lyricism doesn't fall hugely into his category style of music. You know what I mean? And that's okay. Me, I love it. If the beat's dope, if it's G-Funk, and that's why we do this, right? So I, everybody understands when somebody picks this album's better or they go for something different, especially when it comes to hip-hop. If there's an opinion, it's a strong strong opinion yeah 100 so i think anybody and i've met tons of guys that are just like man i couldn't stand no limit and then i also know people like myself who are like no limit for life yeah. you know what i mean and that's how it is and the same thing with death row same thing with r&b do i respect every time that you rate because you give uh and that's what a lot of hip-hop heads from back in the day need to understand to even be able to sit back and listen to the music that you weren't a huge fan of and do what you're doing it, true and listen to it and be like, yo, dude, I wouldn't even have gave that shit a chance back in the day. I'm going to give it a three and a half. You're like, yeah, hey, that shit, a three and a half. There was something I didn't hear that was worth hearing. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, I think, would agree with with, with the way that you're, you're rating yeah. things. So I gave it a five and a half. So how about we do uh, Christmas on Death Row? I, I already kind of said the most I can give this five shit as a, a five. I'll, I'll give it a five. It's... Five. Like I said, if you want a Christmas album and you're gonna play this shit during the during you know the holiday season, you can play it with kids around. You can play it with you know whoever around. There's nothing offensive from Death Row, which sounds like an oxymoron, but there's nothing offensive on it. Mm-hmm. All it's all Christmas music, and some of the shit's dope. Yeah, yeah, I just not it. all of it. <laughs> so you got five, and uh, you know what? I think we're going to sit even. I'm going to give it a five too, Doc. I'm going to give it a five. I heard it, man. There's some serious dopeness on there. and uh, Yeah, just before we go here too, I just wanted to bring kind of notice to a few other tracks out there that are, are Christmas that really stuck out for me. Loved them as I was you know, flipping through 
it, mostly 90s, but this is kind of across the board. Uh, mentioned before, Sean Price stole Christmas, or how Sean Price stole yeah, Christmas. Yeah, the, the Grinch. Yeah. Unbelievable, 2017. Obviously, yeah. players bought by Outkast. Um, what You Want for Christmas by Quad City DJs, 95. Yeah. And Let the Jingle Bells Rock by Sweet Tea, 87. Yeah. Uh, got the kind of Digbo Planets vibe going on, Ladybug vibe. Yeah. Tight, even really good song. Even Run DMC, uh, I don't know what uh, year it came out, but he was like... Uh, um, Christmas yeah, and Hollis? Yeah, Christmas and, Ho- Christmas and Hollis was dope. I love that track by them, man. A lot of dope Christmas jams out there, man. And I mean, it was really fun doing doing this episode and doing being able to speak about the Christmas uh, music, the Christmas gangster shit, the G-Funk that came out in the 90s and even later and continues to come out. Um, you know, whether you, you love it, you dislike it, you feel it at certain times man it's there christmas yeah. music is doing its thing i had and, never uh, heard the no limit album so that was it was all kind of brand new. new to me yeah definitely something new, yeah. old but new yeah you know what i mean yeah. something new for you to listen to that had some gems on there for sure so we're glad that all y'all came out with us again we're in the 90 proof lounge we're drinking captain moe's it's us the Grinch is in the house. We're all just chilling. And uh, we hope everybody out there is having a happy, uh, happy holidays and going to have a great new year. Good things to come in the new year for everybody. And we wish everybody the best success and health. 90 proof. And we out this bitch. Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho.